In this video, I'm going to share with you how I design homepages of websites on Adobe XD. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing wonderful. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode of Wine and Design. I'm so excited you're here. Unfortunately, I do not have a glass of wine tonight, but promise I'll be having one this weekend, but I really need all the energy I can get this week because it's been a busy week. The reason it's been so busy is because I've been working so hard on my WordPress website design course, and on Monday, if you guys are on my email list or following me on Instagram, you would have seen that I announced the pre-sale of my WordPress course, and with this pre-sale, you do get a discount, and I will be offering that pre-sale sale until Sunday at midnight, so definitely be sure to check that out and get the pre-sale so you can get that discount and um, join my students. I'm so excited. I am going to be releasing all of the content on April 4th. So from now until then, it's just getting all the students ready. And then April 4th, you can start learning how to build WordPress websites. And I go into a lot of detail in this course. It's took, taken me a lot longer to create the course than I thought because there's so much to learn about WordPress and I shared everything I do know and I'm going to continue to share everything I learn and everything that evolves with WordPress. So once you're enrolled in the course, you get access to everything I update in the course throughout the rest of time. So definitely be sure to check it out and I do want to take all my students and create a community on Facebook or something like that. So there's so much to come. And if you're already a student, I cannot wait to offer you guys so many other things. So anyway, I wanted to mention that I'll leave the link right down below if you're interested in the pre-sale. If you have any questions, just let me know and I will answer them. I do have a payment plan option with this course because it's a little bit more expensive than my branding because it's a lot longer, a lot more content. And I wanted to offer that payment plan. So it's feasible for most people or at least a little bit more easy. So yeah, I'm so excited. But in this video, I want to share with you guys how I design homepages on Adobe XD. I want to kind of give you some insight into my website process. You'll kind of see my thought process behind what it is I'm designing, but I also kind of just want to show you guys a little behind the scenes of my work. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so I want to show you guys how I design websites using Adobe XD, and I'm going to show you actually my personal website that I'm redesigning. I'm going to show you how I'm going to redesign that on Adobe XD, and while I'm doing this, I'll kind of throw in some reasons why I like to do it on here before developing it. So first off, let's open XD, and I'm going to head on over here to New. And when it comes to the sizing of your Adobe XD, this one right here, the 1920 by 1080 is the perfect sizing. I like to go the widest we can get, that way it works on all devices and that's like the best choice typically. So I'm gonna click on that. And the first thing I wanna show you guys is how to set up your XD so that the process is smooth from here on out. So over here on the left-hand side, you'll see document assets. There's colors, character styles, components, videos. So I'm gonna add in all of my branding materials and there's pretty easy, quick way to do this. So I'm gonna go over to my Illustrator and I'm already open on my personal branding artboards, which they're kind of messy, but we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna copy my color palette right here. I'm gonna paste it into my XD and you'll notice they're grouped together I don't want that right now so I'm going to ungroup them and then when I select all of them and hit this plus sign they're all going to be added there so it's a pretty easy way to add the colors now when it comes to the character styles that is when you have to go in and manually just add them one by one because we're going to have different sizings for each different character style so I'm going to do heading one get my fonts in there and if you take my course I have the exact sizing for each heading one heading two body all those different typography settings I have it all listed out based on like the recommendations 
my recommendations of what sizings to use for the website and also versus mobile. So that goes, that's a whole entire lesson in my, in my course. Okay, so make it the smallest size around like 18 is fine. And now when I select all of these and hit the plus sign, they're all going to be added there. And you could go in and name these heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, which will probably help you as you're designing. Or if you have a developer that you're hiring, it might help them as well. Take a look at that. So now we're going to add the body font. Typically, I recommend around 14 size 14 font all the way up to 16. I don't really like to go anywhere below, or I don't even really like to do size 12 font. It just looks too small in my opinion. So one thing I forgot to mention just now was you, I should have made these the specific colors. For example, if I write a bunch of text here and let's say I want it to be heading one, now it's not going to be that exact fill color that I want it to be. So if I were to have gone to brown right here and then added it that way, it would have had the brown colors. So I messed up that part, but we're not going to worry about it. I'm just doing it as an example for the purposes of this video. For the components, that is when you can add in your logos. So I'm going to just copy this, paste it, and add it. So there's my first component and I can just do that. Makes it easier, like I can just drag it in here. It makes it easier to resize them and click on it. Like um, you're gonna wanna hold shift and resize it, but, or option resize. Hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't group them before I pasted it over here. So make sure to group it. That way you can easily resize it when you hold shift. But yeah, that makes it easy to add in logos like that. So when it comes to building the home page, you can drag this down like that to make it longer and a little bit better. I always like to name my artboard too. So I'm gonna name it home. That way when I wanna do my about page, I can just go up here and do about. It just makes it much easier. The more organized you can be, the more easy your life's gonna be. So for the homepage, I always start building my websites like a hamburger, meaning I take the buns and then I do the filling as we go. So when I use that metaphor, what I mean is building your navigation in your menu, or sorry, your, your menu area in your footer area. So the header and footer, do that first and then build the internal parts. So I'm gonna do that right now. And you can always double click this and drag it down lower if you need more space. Okay, so now I'm gonna drag in, I'm gonna just make this a different color and drag in my logo. Make sure I group them. And now we can play with the navigation area. Oops. I'm actually going to create another character style for the menu. That way I can use that anywhere else on the website if I need to. So for the menu, I'm gonna do size 18 font and add that in here. And then when you select all these to make sure the spacing's perfect between each one, I'm gonna go up here, select this, 
and just make sure the sizing is good. Now I'm going to group those so we can keep them together. And when it comes to icons, so if you want to really represent like, oh, I want social icons up here, search icons up here, what I do is I go to this website called Flat Icon, then it'll pop up all the different options for the Instagram logos. And one thing I like to keep in mind just for design thoughts is always pick low um, icons that have the same type of width on it because I don't want to do something super thick like this and then super thin like it just you're going to tell the difference when it's kind of like zoomed out and everything so typically I always choose this first one I can find all the other icons I need with the same width so I'm going to go here and just copy that color and I do like this membership because I use the flat icon quite a bit like to like add some dynamic pieces to it so I just shrink it down like that you can add it as a component and just bring it in here so that's how I would do icons now when it comes to the images on the top here we can just drag a box like that make it a color for now that way it's easy to to see where that is and where the next thing ends and I'm gonna go find an image to add in there well I'm actually gonna make it this color and I think for my design I want to do a gif right here um, I want to have some sort of dynamic something dynamic on the first page so that you can see what it is that I do and I was thinking a GIF, that way I can show not only my work, but like my branding photos and stuff. So I'm going to go create that and I will come back and show you guys how I do it. This is what I have so far. I did design quite a bit off camera. Um, I do need to change these fonts to be my actual new branding font. So let me do that real quick. And I decided not to do, I don't really want to do a dark color up top. I want to keep it really light and airy, but I did want to have like some sort of color up here. So let me do that. Something like that. I think I like this color. Let me add that in. Okay, I like that a lot better. And I'm just going to add... Let me just move this one over and then we can change the color and I don't think I need a button I want to keep it really simple okay so the idea is this is gonna be a gif that moves and shows my work maybe some other cool photos of me in the mountains and I really want my mission statement very large and clear up top there so Minimal and modern brand and web designer for wellness businesses. I love when I add in a little bit of like italic and I feel like that's a good word to do for italics. Kind of like breaks the sentence up and draws your eye there. And this also needs to be changed to my new font. So let's create a character style for the button font. I'm just going off what I like the look of, to be honest. No rules here. And I'm going to name that button. All right, there we go. And then I did start designing these sections because I had a vision for it. I just wanted to get it out there onto my XD file before I forgot my vision. Um, so I'm going to add a color behind this. It just needed something. Cool. Yeah, I'm loving how this is coming along. I did get these really cool line art drawings of mountains, and I feel like that's a really cool element to add in here throughout the website to just break it up a little bit. And let's change this again. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this is coming along. So I'm going to continue to add in these mountain elements and just make it very dynamic. 
and I'm very happy I got photos taken. I'll probably change this to something else. But um, yeah, I know I said I build my websites hamburger style. This one's a little different because it is my personal website and I have so many ideas for it. Like I'm just so connected with this that I don't feel like I need to follow a structure as much. But if it was a client website, I definitely would do header and footer first. And most of the time, your footer menu is going to be a little bit different than the header menu. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to just copy this and bring it down here and kind of touch on some of the things that are important to note for your footer menu. You should have a privacy policy, a terms and conditions, and if you sell things like me, a refund policy which typically if you have your shop separate that would be on the shop side but mine are my shops connected so I'm gonna add that to refund policy and I think I want them horizontal like this and I'll just make it smaller font and um, let's put I think contacts actually a good thing to have on the footer as well okay so I'm gonna decrease the size I don't know actually let me shrink it a little and see. I'm gonna make sure the spacing's all good. Okay. So there's my footer menu and I will likely add some sort of like my logo right here. I might change this. I honestly just like to get all my ideas out there and then as we go, adjust and change and add different things. I know that some rule of thumbs I like to follow for home pages are that you should always have call to actions in every section. It's very important that way they know you kind of have to guide your viewers or your visitors to your website and take them where you want them to go. If you don't want them to go right away to your contact form, take them right away to your about page. Like you can guide them and that's something to keep in mind. Um, so I definitely want to include a section for reviews because that's always really important to display some like testimonials and then of course a section of that will link them to my work. So those are the two sections I'm going to make and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. What my homepage looks like. I'm really happy with it now. I feel like it matches everything I was visualizing and I know for some of these like as I'm also designing on XC I'm thinking about ways that are going to be easier for me to develop when I go into Divi so it's something to kind of keep in mind as you're designing you don't want to do something completely out of the box that's really hard to develop if you're going to be the one doing it so always keep that in mind as well I know that this will probably require some sort of plugin and I know that I, I know how to add these elements behind things. So all of this is no problem for me. And yeah, this is what it looks like. I'm really excited to continue making all my pages. And I'm sure I'll edit some of the images in here and of course the content. But it's nice to just have a starting point of the design so you know where to go from here. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. Also, in my course, I talk about feedback, how I get that, how to get the best feedback from your clients so that you can avoid revisions in the future. So that's another thing I do teach about. And be sure to check out that pre-sale right down below so you can be part of my students and my community. I'm so excited and I cannot wait. Thank you to everyone who already enrolled. I really appreciate you and I'm so excited for everything to come. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate it so much if you subscribe, like the video, and I will see you guys in my next one.